Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. And today I have with me Dominic Lee, who is a young actuary. Uh, and so today we have another uh, career type conversation, which are, which are really my favorite ones. Dominic, thank you for joining me today. How's it going? Pretty good, Tony. Very, very um, pleased to be on your program. Awesome. So, so, so Dominic and, and, I, and I been connected on LinkedIn for a while, but we hadn't chatted. And then he had the opportunity or rather, I, I, I've introduced you, so I should talk directly at this point. Uh, so you oh, had sure. the, 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 the uh, really cool opportunity of, of speaking at, at a conference, which, I, which I've done many, many times. And you, you chose to do a TED style, like, like a shorter. Uh, and, and those are a lot harder. <laughs> like, like I, I've got to start yeah. with, with that. Like, like I can, I can yeah. do an hour presentation with my eyes closed. Oh, yeah. 10, 15 or 18 minutes, it takes a lot more preparation. Absolutely. Um, yeah. No, one yeah. of the hardest things I've done. Um, I, I, you know what? I, I, I did, I, I did a, a test style, uh, uh, I think 10 or 12 minutes at IICF Women in Insurance uh, mm -hmm. about company cultures and the importance of company culture. And the, like they invited me months and months before. This was, I think, yeah. 2017. No, 2018. Yeah. It was 2018. Uh, they invited me months and months before, and and uh, the night before, I'm sweating bullets, still trying to get the damn thing into 10 minutes. Uh, yes. it, it was hard. So so so, uh, and and you rocked it. You completely rocked it. So for for the well, listeners, uh, the the topic of the of it is really interesting, and I'm gonna include the link to YouTube where they can watch the whole thing and absolutely go watch it. Then come back to 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 to, to the podcast uh, because it really is a well polished presentation. But but for, first, I, I'd love to to dig in. So so how how did you end up in the actuarial field? Let let's let's start there. Yeah, so I'll start back to my childhood really because I think everything is connected. Um, I'm originally from Jamaica, and I was a swimmer growing up. I was a competitive swimmer from a very young age. And I was always very competitive. I was actually training. So I came to the United States towards the end of high school. Um, went to a private boarding school there, was training for the Olympics. And uh, ended up missing it narrowly, but still had a very, you know, very long, distinguished career. Traveled the globe and met some great people along the way. And then as most people who are in athletics have to make a transition at some point, you transition to, to what I call real life. I thought of what I wanted to do. And initially I was an engineering major. I think it was chemical engineering. And I remember going into the very first, first class and the assignment that the teacher gave was just very overwhelming. And it just, it, I just felt out of place. I felt like it really wasn't for me. And, but I knew I was always good at math and I was always interested in math and I wanted to apply, it, but I didn't want to be a professor. I want to work in acad academia. I wanted to apply math in a really practical way. So it was great timing. Uh, when I started my undergrad, like in my second year, I learned about actuarial science. I had a friend who was doing it, and I thought it was a really uh, unique confluence between math, you know, finance, economic insurance, all these different disciplines, a very versatile skill set. And that's how it started. I I um, got into that program, and then I graduated and started taking exams. Okay. And, um, and got a job at uh, you know, I got a job at a major carrier um, in North America. Okay. And, and but, but, by the yeah. way. Uh, podcast wise i'm perfectly okay with company names it's it's up to yeah. you whether you know if, if you don't want to so 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 yeah. you, do, you do your your internship and, and then you spend nine years at, at a gigantic yes. uh, property casualty and a really really good property casualty uh in, insurance company uh yeah. and and then you recently made a move but but so so uh do you have your acas yes i have my, i have my aca so i'm an associate I'm okay. still working on fellowship exams. As you know, they're very challenging. Um, so uh, it's, you know, it's, 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 many people don't actually get to the fellow level. In fact, many great insurance professionals yeah. started in the actuarial path and, and decided halfway through not to pursue. So, so congrats on, on getting to the associate. Uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. so, so in, 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 yeah. in those 10 years as, as an actuary, uh, how did the idea for the TED talk come? Uh, and, 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 and just to give a quick summary, basically the TED talk, what I got out of it is, hey, actuarial science can be used or should be used in a lot of other fields beyond the insurance, that the skill set yes. uh, would be a benefit to, to many other fields where risk plays a part, which is 
many, yes. many skills, right? Uh, yeah, so yeah, no, that's a great question. And I'll, I'll give you just a little bit of background from, from my first role or my first company and then talk about the motivation. So I'd say, if, if you think of a typical actuary, you know, the, the per, someone who not familiar with the profession, you may think of someone who's crunching numbers behind a screen, someone who's very risk averse, not very social, not a great communicator. And during the time, so during the time that I worked at, at the first carrier, um, it, it was a really big carrier and there are lots of actuaries. We were one of the largest, probably the second largest employer of actuaries. And I noticed that I feel like I always stood out. I, I, I call myself the Maverick Actuary, plug for my handle on Instagram, the Maverick Actuary, you can follow me there. And I always just, I, I've always approached actuarial science from a different angle. I look at it from the, I, I look at it from a business lens. I look at it from like a big picture, strategic, visionary perspective. Whereas the majority of the colleagues I worked at, they would, you know, really get into the weeds very quickly and sometimes lose sight of the, the what we're trying to do. So that's something I noticed was a very consistent theme, not just within the company I worked, but but within the broader industry as well. Um, now, in terms of the specific motivation for this talk, it was a few things. I would say it was three things. The first is COVID. When COVID happened, we all took a um, we all got a chance to really sit down and take things in, right? We weren't moving at the same pace. We got a chance to, to let things simmer and distill. And I noticed, one of the things I noticed was that there wasn't a lot of actuarial or if any actuarial representation um, in the public uh, domain. When you think of the, where there was a coronavirus task force, media panels, we were faced with this really massive ERM problem. You're an insurance guy, one of the biggest ERM problems of our lifetime. And there were not a lot of, in my opinion, competent voices on risk. In, in, when I say that, I mean voices that could really evaluate the full spectrum of risk, all the dependencies and interactions. We had a lot of medical professionals, quite rightly so, because we're dealing with a pandemic. But when it came to the commerce and the fiscal um, issues of how to, how to deploy relief, uh, how to reopen strategically, I thought that um, I was frustrated at, at some of the, the lack of competent voices on risk. So that got me thinking. Um, now, the, the opportunity at the Growth Actuary uh, Summit landed in my lab at the same time. So it was really good timing in terms of I was already thinking of how actuaries can really apply their core insurance skill sets more broadly. And then the second, the second part is just my honest experience in the field. I, I hadn't seen a lot of presentations in the past within the actuarial domain that really energize and galvanize me. So let, let me let me pause you there because so, sure. so I, I've got an in, I, I'm not an actor in any in any way shape or form, sure. um, but I I did a lot of insurance conferences uh, before uh, my current role at Jacobson, uh, but had never been to an, to an actuarial one. And uh, then I got hired at Jacobson, and and very quickly thereafter, I I, I got to go to to to, to uh, I think the first one was was Cagney Casualty Actuaries of, of Greater New York. Uh, yes. I've been to it several times now. So so anyway, I, I go to Cagney, I get back, uh, I have a call with my boss, and and my boss says, "So how do you go?" And and, and I say, "Well." It, 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 it was fine, but it was a little weird. Uh, I I would meet people, chat with them for a little bit, hand them my card. And everywhere else I've ever been, people, when you hand them your card, they automatically hand you their, your card back, their card back. Right, right. And he's just laughing. And, and, and he's like, yeah, with actuaries, you have to ask. And then like two weeks later, I, I went to the Connecticut one uh, at the Indian Casino. Uh, and and uh, so they're both CAS events, just regionals from different regions. Uh, yes. I think I went to the North Carolina one and then the, the Connecticut one. So anyway, I go to, to the next one a few weeks later. And this time I'm actively asking for cards after I have a conversation with people. And I can't tell you how many people w w went like, oh, I, I don't have cards or I, I don't have them on me. <laughs> uh, yeah. it, and, and the presentations, generally my experience has been uh, in most insurance conferences, people are there to network. At actual conferences, people are there for, for the CE hours. And yes, <laughs> right? yes and, and, exactly. And the presentations are, are very technical, uh, the, uh, very rare. Right. If ever, do you actually get one that that's like uh, presented in an interesting way? Yes, and, and, and that has a lot to do with the way I think that we attract talent within the profession. When you have a very rigid credentialing mechanism that's based on kind of IQ-based memorization, you're not going to get the strong strategic thinkers and, and communicators and people with emotional intelligence. So that's what happens. 
and that's that that I would say is one perhaps one of the reasons why why you had that experience. So yeah, you know, I just had not seen that within. We have a similar experience there. Just the presentations tend to be bland, and I've had some really good opportunities in my career, not just through actuarial, but I've attended business conference. I attended a massive conference in 2017 called Synergy Global. Had the the privilege of meeting, you know, Malcolm Gladwell, Gary Vaynerchuk, Simon awesome. Sinek, Richard Branson, just these great names, and I've, I've seen I see them present. And the way, and I really was able, I took a lot of notes. Um, like one example is this guy, Guy Kawasaki. He was the, the chief evangelist, the first chief evangelist at, at uh, Apple. And he says, always, like if you want to be a PowerPoint ninja, always instead of everyone goes with a white background with regular text, go with a black background. And if you notice in my TED talk, that's what I did. You realize that the text, things pop out a lot more when you go with a black background. So those small tips, I use a lot of those small tips. And, and, you know, you've read the book Talk Like Ted by Tar Carmine Gallo to really hone in and get get it to be as impactful visually um, from, from a message perspective as I could. So that was the second thing really is wa wanting to show that we have a really good message. And as, as long as we communicate it effectively and impactfully, then we can have we can have influence and reach. And then the third is really I, I thought, given that we've been in COVID for 18 months, We've, we're, we're doing this out of convenience now, this Zoom call. So it, it has its benefits. But I thought that people were really tired of seeing people just sit behind their laptop on a static screen. I wanted to give people a different experience, right? A little bit of entertainment as well. So I thought that was a great opportunity there to go back on the stage. People probably haven't been to a live event in a while. And it wasn't live, it was virtual, but to give them the feeling of what it would have been like. My goal was to get, let them feel it, like it you were- Definitely, I, I've got to agree with that. It, it definitely, uh... The, I didn't see it live, but the, the, the recording felt felt like like an in-person event. It it, it didn't, right. uh, uh, yeah. The, 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 you're on stage, like like it, it's it's very much yeah. the, the the right feeling for for it. I thought it was it had been recorded at at, a, at an in-person event. Uh, so so why did you decide to go for for, for the shorter uh, TED format as opposed to like an hour or forty five minutes kind of thing? Great question. They there's actually science within. I'll actually show everyone this book and plug it because it's such a good book. Talk like Ted I, by I Carmen agree. Gallo. It's a wonder. You've seen it. You've read it. Wonderful. Yep, I've read it. Yeah. So Carmen Gallo. He actually. So he's he's um interviewed all like over a thousand of uh, examined a thousand hours of TED footage, all the speakers, and he actually cites in his book there's scientific evidence that the the human brain we really can't retain more than like three to three to four things within like our short term memory. And me personally, uh, when I attend conferences, sometimes these presentations are really long and you get bored after a while. You just can't, you be, your brain physically can't retain things. So I just think the shorter format is just much more compact and, and every word, every line, when every word and every line packs a punch and is sticky, you're more likely to remember it. So it really maximizes your attention and retention. That's really why I decided to go with the TED style. And I also, I had been, at the time, watching a lot of TED Talks, it was just coincidence. I was watching, you know, Ma Malcolm Gladwell, Bill Gates, Dan Pink, uh, what's his name, David Epstein, uh, just some spectacular presentations. Just, and I thought it was so effective. And, and like you said, it was short. I was like, wow, like, and these are so short. And I'm like, I'm, I'm retaining so much more from these very short presentations than I have from a 45 minute or an hour. And it's actually the same principle with meetings. I've been thinking of that more recently with my meetings is, like when I get to like 20, 25 minutes, I start to, my brain starts to kind of zone out. So I think, I think that same principle can be applied to meetings as well in, in anyone's career. Were you, were you prepared for, for how much harder a short presentation is? Or were you surprised by how much work it took? Absolutely surprised. I, uh, to your point, the hardest part is when you have all this knowledge. And I had, I had just, just pages and pages of notes that I made. And then it was just to distill it. And interestingly enough, the first time I was going by the guidance in the book, they were saying that usually it's like, I think 3,700 words. I was down to the, the level of granularity where I was like, okay, let me go for this word count because I think it will translate to that. And then the word count ended up being more than I thought it would be. Could have been because of the, the words I was using or the speed at which I was speaking, but we, we, we moved things around. I was in the living room with my girlfriend who's an actuary as well, practicing. And we would just keep chopping it down. But it was a lot of work, really. People think you intuitively you think that a longer presentation is harder, but to your point, it's way easier. Because, uh, absolutely. <laughs> because I, I, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just kind of saying because 
you know, you have to really tell people only what they need to know. It's it's not about you. It's really about, and that's one of the learning the, the learnings I've known this before, but really reinforced it. That presentations are about your audience. It's really not what you want them to know that you know, right? It's it's what they need to know, and and it's very hard and it's very nuanced. It's a tough challenge to get it down without diluting the value. That was one of the, the, my concerns. Is if it's too short, am I going to dilute the value for the people who are there? And thankfully, that wasn't the case. But it took a lot of work to get that balance between um, conciseness, but actually having, um, you know, a message that was substantive enough. I, yeah, I know. I agree completely. I, I, I can do my my one hour presentation on 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 millennials and insurance with my eyes closed, and and sometimes I. I I, I present uh, other things that the Jacobson marketing team developed. Uh, again, 45 minutes to an hour. I sure. can prep for those in, in a couple of days, like, like no problem at all. And I, I always feel a little more nervous than I do for, for my millennials one, which I know really well, uh, but the feedback's always good. Uh, yeah. the, the 10 minute one I, I gave at ICF, <laughs> I sweated that thing. Like, like it it's is cold. hard. Cold. You're, you're right. It, it, has to, it has to be impactful enough. Uh, right. but you've got, you've got to watch every word. And, and the, the book that you met, that you mentioned, uh, to talk, talks about, about the different ways to prepare. Right. So, so, so there, mm -hmm. there, there's the, the, uh, uh, don't read, right. Just like, like at the very sure. best have notes. Uh, yeah. and, and, and then there's this unca uncanny valley of, of, it sounds like you, that's not the correct terminology, I don't think, but, but that it sounds like you're reading. Uh, but if if you are going to memorize it, then you have to go well past that uh, yes. and, and yes. get to to, to 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 an incredible level of, of preparation. And you have to kind of figure out for you where yeah. you you can deliver a, a good one. In in my case, I I can't memorize worth a crap. Uh, right. So, so in, in in my case, it it's it it it's the 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 notes approach. And generally, what I do is slides yeah. with with some sort of of image. And a keyword, keyword or something, yeah. Right, yeah. keywords, yeah, exactly. and then I'll talk ar around the keywords. Yeah. Um, yeah. But 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 so so, how, which preparation style did, did did you end up doing? To me, it it, it sounded like 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 you did the one that I think is hardest, which is memorize the yeah. thing, and then practice it so many times that it actually that it actually feels natural. Yeah, no, that, that's a good point. That was a good observation. Uh, yeah, I would say it was the first one. And and between us, I, I, I would have preferred to have more practice. You always would have liked to prepare more. That's one of the, the presentation things I would advise anyone, any presentation that you have, always budget more time for preparation. Because in my case, we had a lot of production and deck elements that really kind of pushed me to the brink of home, what my capacity was. Um, the deck, Tony, The, I'm not sure what you thought of it. We could talk about it somewhere if you want, but um, I, I, I was going to ask you about that. I, I I honestly thought that you outsourced it to a designer. We did, yeah. So so what we did, so yeah. So what we did is, and we can talk more about that. But we had a three team. We had it, originally it was one graphic artist that I was working with, and my my initial idea was really to just kind of like you said, outsource it. Just focus on the script, the dialogue, and the practice. And then I think some of the challenges were with it being, it was a smaller company that I worked with and they were just not really used to an actuarial. They probably had not done an actuarial thing before. They so, most definitely, no yeah, right. in the history of humanity before yeah. has brought in a decider to make yeah. slides. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right. so I naively the, thought. I, the, yeah. the, the president of CAS did not, does not go to a designer to, <laughs> to, yeah, to, right. to make his presentation like, like his internal that's marketing probably, at the very most probably true yeah that's probably true <laughs> so when i went when i went to them i naively thought oh well yeah you know i, I need, i'm relying on you to to bring this to life and i gave them some clips of bill gates and and david epstein and everyone i'm like yeah like these are ones that i like so make it happen and and then that wasn't the case you know we we, we had to go we went through so many iterations we we ultimately spent 53 hours on the deck <laughs> tremendous amount of time And then if you remember, there's a couple of animated images in the end, those cartoon images, we created those from scratch. My idea was to create a vision of a future beyond insurance. And I wanted to show actuaries. Oh, in, I, I, in I, 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 have, I have to say, I have never seen that level of commitment to, mm -hmm. to the deck. How do I explain it? So, 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 so basically, you, 
you you create the vision for for this other actuarial organization, not not CAS. Yes, yes uh, we're actuarial, yeah. <laughs> right? And, and and you create a look for them, and and mm -hmm. uh, what what is it called? Uh, uh, News announcements. I, that's not the, the yes, the, yes, yes. Yeah, like headlines uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, releases right. or what? 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 what yes, what's yes. called uh, PR. 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 PR yes, yes. Yes. Right. Uh, and it all looks professional. Uh, right. It. It. It absolutely. It absolutely. Uh, like this. Let's put it this way. So I, I, I'm a CPC. I'm very involved with the CPC society, uh, sure. and there's a lot of things that the CPC society needs to figure out uh, as, as mm -hmm. we're going to the future. Yeah. And I would love to, 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 to present internally uh, mm -hmm. to, to the society using that kind of thing. You, you, you seem the, the, let's divorce ourselves from, from what we actually are and, and fantasize yes. it, what we actually could have been or could be in the future. Uh, right. And, or could and be make it look like, 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 like make it so professional that, that they don't have to imagine it. You made it real for, for them. Like, like I was blown away, but, but yeah. I, I've never seen that level of, of preparation uh, when it comes to, to, to a decade in any conference. No, no, I appreciate that. And then the last thing I was going to say about the deck is that, and then in the end, <laughs> what, I, what I really wanted to do was create what I call like a multi-sensory experience. So, you know, you have, of course, you have visuals, you have sound, like I had a deck a slide in the beginning when the, you know, I said reimagine and then the deck, the bracket took off and we heard a little bit of sound. And then in the beginning, I had my little hot dog poem, which is a real story, by the way, just in case anyone thinks it's not. Um, so, you know, you get a sense of smell and taste. But the one thing I thought was missing was really motion and sense of space. So I wanted to, to, to let the deck feel like it was moving the entire time, right? So when you saw like the balls bouncing and things moving as you were going along the road to growth and transformation, the original graphic artist that we had didn't have that skill set. So I actually had to work with a third person on that. So it was, like I said, that part really drained me. I thought it came out well in the end and it sounds like pretty sound your feedback that you enjoyed it so i'm glad I'm, I'm glad to hear that but um that was by far the hardest part and it um it took away from some of my rehearsal time but um you know just given the circumstances and given it was my very first time doing something like this i thought we did as as well as we could okay so yeah fantastic job on, the, on, on that presentation um if if you're in the actuarial field or even in the insurance field, go watch it. It's a heck of a, of a presentation. Lots to learn and lo lots of great ideas. Um, uh, a little bit of of of, of career conversation or career advice. I, I'm I'm curious on so 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 uh, my usual listeners probably most of them are not actuaries, uh, but. Since we're since we have an actuary on today, I'm guessing we'll get more more young actuaries listening to the the normal. Normally, we get we get a lot yeah. of either like underwriting claims agents type, like 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 the most insurance professionals not actuaries. Uh, so, what advice do you have for 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 young actuaries? So 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 so, what I've noticed in, in the three and a half years that I've actually been serving the actuarial community uh, with with staffing services. Uh, what, what, what I've noticed is the difference between, and I might be wrong, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but the difference between the, let's say, $100,000, $150,000 uh, actuary yep. and the three, yep. four, five, six hundred thousand dollar $600,000 chief actuary uh, is not yep. their technical skills. Uh, it, <laughs> exactly. It's not whether they got their, F, their, their, their FCAS. It's their ability to communicate with the business side, right? Of, uh, right? So, so, yes. so understand what what all my actuaries are doing, and be able to communicate. That that's the piece that that I that I've seen is a lot harder to find, right? Yeah. So, so in my opinion, yeah. Right, but but I'm not mm -hmm. an actuary. So, so you've been ten years. You're, you're you know you're 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 a little bit into your career. Yeah. What career advice do you have for for young actuaries? Yeah, no, that is that is spot on, Tony. That is, that has been my observation as well. It's, I think actuaries have the tendency to be very married to, I don't want to say to technology, but they, they, they tend to be married to tools and mechanics. So you'll have, for instance, in my experience, you'll have actuaries who 
you'll have a younger actuary comes onto the team and they can do visual basic and they can speed up a spreadsheet or a process or something. And that might be good in some cases, but they're not really able to dimensionalize a problem. They're not able to really uh, communicate the results of their analysis. They do this, I'll spend a lot of time on this analysis, they get deep, but sometimes the results of the analysis or the, the steps that they're following are not connected to like what needs to be solved. So it's really having kind of like um, what I call like a strategic thought process, really strategic problem solving and critical thinking skills, being able to understand the problem, understand the problems that need to be solved um, and find the most optimal solutions for that. But it's, it's not, the technology itself is not the end product. It's really partnering with, with IT and business intelligence professionals to um, the tagline I use is really to maximize insights and minimize mechanics. Where actuaries really add value is an in insight generation, helping um, risk oriented organizations to make decisions on risk by putting a cost on risk. That's kind of how I sum up, um, summarize what we do. So it's really putting yourself in a good place to, like I said, to, to solve problems in a more strategic and deliberate way and not focusing on the buttons that you press, but really the thought process of solving a problem. And um, so that, that's one piece of advice that I would give. So, so, so I really think, on, yeah, I really think on broadly, on one, of the, one of the, one of the, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. One, one of the, the, the trains of thought that I have, and I think Mark Cuban, I've heard a lot of really smart people and you know very successful people say this is that in the future, functional programming is gonna be a little bit less relevant with advanced technologies, AI, and all this stuff. Like, I don't, and I'm not saying in any way that that those technologies are going to replace actuaries. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what they're going to replace is the mechanical pieces of the jobs, the part where you were just updating reports, pressing buttons, not the true insight generation. So I think that uh, that um, actuaries, there needs to be an increased focus in the profession on the communication um, and the problem solving. And not and less so on you know like every time you ask a recruiter, what 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 do you need for this job? Oh, you need to know R, Python, SAS. They, they give you a long list of programs, and it's not that you don't need to know any of those. You need to understand the capabilities on what they can do, and you may need to work with them. You know where where now, as you know, the insurance industry is notoriously, um, they're not they're not always the the quickest to change, trying to find a diplomatic way to say that. <laughs> so, so, yeah. We are, uh, most in, in my experience, most insurance companies think of themselves as quick followers, uh, yeah. when in reality, they're absolute laggards. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, continue. Yeah, so, you know, it's, um, it's like I said, focusing less on, um, on that mechanical piece and, and really just about problem solving and communication. Uh, you can do an analysis and you can spend three, two, three months, but if you can't communicate that to your stakeholder and get them to take action, then, um, you know, that wasn't the best use of your time. So it's, it's some of this, the, and I wouldn't even call them soft skills. There's some things that are soft skills like communication and emotional intelligence. But as I've learned, um, I think presentation skills are, are sometimes um, mischaracterized as soft skills. And I, I learned the hard way that that's one of the most technical skills there is. So it's technical <laughs> skills are good. It's just that, what do you mean by technical? When I say technical, I don't mean like IT mechanical. I mean, really understanding um, the nuances of actuarial science um, and how that can be applied to problem solve. I, I would say that the technical skills are, and again, I'm, I'm not an actuary. Uh, sure. The technical skills are, are table stakes in, in the actuarial game. Like, exactly, like, table stakes, yeah. If, 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 if they make it, right, many don't. But but if, if they make it to 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 the ACAS and even more to the FCAS, they they have the technical skills. Like they wouldn't right. have survived the exams if they didn't have the technical skills. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so 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 uh, now I, I've from the staffing perspective, uh, I mm -hmm. I and 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 what I, I what I provide personally is is temporary actuaries, is, is actuarial consultants. I have teammates that, that do permanent actuaries, but I, I do consultants. What I what I see a lot of demand for is um, actu actuaries with uh, data science understanding. Yeah. Uh, yes. And uh, who 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 can program the 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 modern tools, you know, the Python R. Sure. Et sure. Uh, sure. But but again, I I'm I 
um, the business that I mean is 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 providing the company an extra set of hands to get stuff done when it needs to get done, not right. the right not for strategic stuff. It's it, yeah. it's 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 more like 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 we're short somebody's out of maternity leave and and we have a reserve mm -hmm. review that that's due or a pricing sure. uh, yeah. right uh, the filing that that's due. We just need somebody yeah. to do it. Um, yeah. So 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 yeah, the the the, the strategic piece is is, is interesting. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's what's what's missing. Okay, awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome, awesome. So 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 Dominic, it's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I uh, yeah. in, in in the you know the, the few hundred actuaries that that I have uh, that I have met o over the last few years, I have met maybe three that I <laughs> that I would say are 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 like. Uh, Good, great communicators. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> rare, uh, so, so keep doing what you're doing, and and, and uh, whatever you can do to to help the the next generation of, of actuaries, uh, yes, uh, learn communication skills and 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 understand their importance. I think you're yeah, doing I, a great service to yeah. the community. No, I appreciate that. And there's one thing I'll say on that point is that I think my purse. I'll just describe my personal mission as really unlocking the power of the actuarial brand. I think there's just great potential in the profession. And it's it, it hasn't been realized partially because we haven't had people who are strong communicators or clear communicators. When you put a message into just very simple terms, because I even, even um, some of the people I sent to talk to, not just my family, but people who are not in actuarial sense told me that they were able to learn just a little bit more about what we do. And, and even some of the concepts like the finite versus infinite mindset can be applicable more broadly. So I think when you have people who communicate and in, in terms that the average person can understand, that's a very um, overlooked but very powerful thing. And it's and, something and we struggle it, with in insurance in general, like it, yeah, even, the, even yeah. the business side. Of, of insurance, we we speak our own language, and and, and uh, there's a lot of academic creep, right? We we, for, we forget that the general public has no idea what the deductible is, <laughs> like, like it like exactly. And, and that was another challenge too. Like I'm I'm telling you, like I had all of these insurance terms like in my notes, and I was like, nah, none of them are gonna work. I got to the point where I think in the end I had like exposure loss and distribution once, but then I took it out because I was like, no, it's not gonna work, and I'm glad I did. <laughs> Okay, even though you were speaking to a conference of actuaries, ultimately. even even though, and and I, and I honestly, like I said, no presentation is perfect, but I don't think that we diluted the message. I think that the whole idea, like I said, I, it's summarized in three words: it's reimagine, embrace, and explore. So reimagine, looking inwards, understanding an actuary's value proposition, understanding the environmental changes that implore um, a restructuring of that value proposition embracing growth and transformation. So acknowledging what the barriers are and um, identifying pathways to alleviating those barriers. And then the third is explore, like you're looking at the areas beyond insurance where we can add value that we haven't historically. So those three words, reimagine, embrace, explore is how I think of it. And I think it's a powerful framework to really, to galvanize the profession and, and to get people to, um, to start helping us to unlock that brand. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, I love it. No, and 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 it it really warms my heart because basically what you're trying to do for the actuarial profession is is very similar to 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 what insurance starts is trying to do, kind of in the business side of of, of insurance, and what what John Backman is trying to do in claims, mm -hmm. and, and uh, what Rand Hanley is trying to do uh, with with agents, uh, helping us see it in a, in, a, in a better light and and and, and grow grows in, into the future. So so I love it. So so. I, I'm assuming that the TED talk is, is not the end of of your of, of, of your uh, quest. No, for sure. I, like TEDx, TEDx is definitely on my list of things I'm pursuing, which would be a little a little bit broader than actuarial. So that's something. Um, the nice thing is when you have like a sample, um, you know, it, it puts you one step closer. And I, I have I I'm in touch with people who've done it before, who might be able to recommend me. So you know, I'm, I'm moving. The next step, I think, from a public speaking perspective is that, and a lot of doors have been opened by the talk. I've, I've had a number of upcoming, you know, we had this and then we have a number of um, podcast interviews and panels on in the in the near future. So so stay tuned for those. Yeah, there's lots more to come in the future. That, uh, that I, I, 
I had me, I had meant to ask that, like, how has life changed uh, after the talk? Uh, and and uh, uh, my own experience ha has been similar. Like, like public speaking mm -hmm. really is powerful in, in that yeah. you you get a good win, and all of mm -hmm. a sudden it opens up a bunch of opportunities. Yeah, uh, it, it really, it, yeah, it just opens up a lot a lot of of, of, yeah. of opportunities uh, w with yeah, it, with the people where where the message really landed. No, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good right now in that regard, and um, that wasn't necessarily the goal, but I, th I thought that it, it that might have been one of the results, which is nice. But um, but yeah, as long as you know, as long as I find avenues to really kind of spread the message, and along as, as long as the engagements align with kind of what I'm trying to accomplish, then I'm you know more than happy to engage with it. So so we have a couple of things coming up, and and yeah, I just want more people to see it, just so that. The message can not just, just not just for gratification or not for gratification at all, really, but just to, so that the because I think the message is powerful. And I think that if we had especially people who I've been really trying to reach out to, which is the hardest group, is really the senior leadership, kind of like the traditional establishment actuaries and not just actuaries, actuaries and industry professionals. And I've I've started to penetrate that layer. It's it's been tough, but I've gotten some good endorsements. We had an endorsement from the past CAS past president. And a couple of other, like a number of chief actuaries have seen it and, and you know, said things public, good things publicly. So I think, um, yeah, it's just to continue to to try to influence the right people, the people who actually have the power to to really, um, you know, influence a change. My my perspective, and I'll leave you with the, with this piece of, of advice. Sure. Um, Re, yeah, getting enough chief actuaries to 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 see it, uh, and and some of them to to champion the message is super helpful. Uh, but I, my perspective is is big change tends to to be generational. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. so that that's why at insurance search we've always focused on on uh, getting the next generation turned on to 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 yeah. to what we would like insurance to be as a career exactly uh, yeah. as they grow the the industry changes to to their ideas yeah. uh what was fascinating was yeah what's fascinating is that um and i don't mean to drag this out but no, 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 no problem. i think it's a good conversation that what's fascinating i've found is the internet it sounds very corny but the internet or cliche with it's the internet has really changed the game because in the past with the specific specifically with the actuarial profession really access to the profession and to to um to forums of impact and public speaking and those things have really been coveted and, and closely held by the, the societies but in today's world where you have per actuary which is the organization who had that conference and just the internet in general whether it's youtube or instagram or anything people can get their message out there's no middleman anymore so as long as you're saying something that's 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 uh, helpful and, and of course is backed by experience and knowledge and, and research, then there's no artificial, but there's a lot of artificial barriers in the profession historically, but those barriers, the internet has broken down a lot of those. A hundred percent. That's yeah. the, the entire history of insurance nerds. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. it, it would have been impossible to do it back in the nineties. Uh, right. Yeah. The zero budget uh, and, and, yeah. and uh, uh the, like the reason we were able to, to build it out of duct tips and, and, and dreams is, is simply because of, of online tools and, and, and yeah. the audience was, was ready for it. And, and, and to this day, the exactly. audience, uh, the number one thing I hear about insurance, and I, I think this fits your, your presentation very well too, it is it's real. It's honest. It's, it's not yeah. marketing, right? It, right? it didn't go through a compliance department and, and, and uh, it yeah. feels real. Right. Uh, and, and, so, so yes, that message is uh, is received much better um, mm -hmm. than than whatever sanitized uh, message uh, CAS yeah. and Civil Society and and APCIA and, and every other organi a wonderful organization we have in our industry, right? They're yeah. hand strung by by, uh, mm -hmm. by their size, by their age, yeah. Uh, yes. and, and by their traditions. Uh, right. and, and uh, by uh, they have to be careful, right? Mm -hmm. they, they don't want to lose sponsorship for they don't want to offend anybody, exactly. Uh, exactly, yeah. Because they require that, that their continuing support for their continuing existence, while little, right. uh, you know, uh, 
little pirate organizations uh, or little uh, unofficial organizations or, or uh, uh, grassroots organizations are, mm-hmm. are able, with the right message, are, are able yes. to, to make a difference yes. without any of those big things. Yeah, so it truly is generational in that sense. Is the way that we communicate and interact is changing and and we have these forums now that we didn't in the past and I think they're going to be in a very interesting position and when enough people start doing that when these, some of these conferences start to, to multiply and 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 there's just so much of this content out there um, you know not saying that everyone's going to do a TED talk but like you know just in general people start putting more out there more honest communication and create more creative things on the creative side um, I think they're going to be in a very interesting position where they may have to, to rethink the way that they communicate and, and do things. But that's that's my take. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, no, it's hope, been great. Hope to see much more much more from you going forward. Uh, and and uh, it's great to to see that that there there are people within the actuarial side that are doing really interesting things with, from the heart, which is yes. Not- <laughs> <laughs> i know what you mean <laughs> thank you no i appreciate that i really you know this was great and really enjoyed the conversation and um yeah thanks for the opportunity tony excellent